you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, last Sunday the congregation recognized the 30th anniversary of my ordination, and I am very thankful for that and wanted to express that to you. Thank you for the the kind words that were spoken, the cards and notes that I have received. I even received some notes and cards from members of past congregations and my mentor pastor, and that was all very special. And so I say thank you very much. It's hard to believe uh, 30 years has gone by, and I've been a pastor for 30 years, but I'm not done learning and growing. We never are as children of God. We continue to learn, continue to grow, and uh, continue to learn stuff. Although I'm starting to wonder, you know, as each year goes past and as I get older, am I learning things new or is it something I actually learned 30 years ago and forgot and I'm relearning it? (laughs) I kind of had that experience in the last couple of weeks as I've been... um, studying uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 7, this chapter all about marriage and singleness. And, uh, you know, so something that is like, okay, did I learn that before? Or have I heard that before? And I can't remember. It just seems like it's all new. But it has to do with the Apostle Paul. And, and most of the time what we think about in regards to the Apostle Paul is, you know, he was a single man and that he was always single. It's very possible he may have been married at one time. And we get that from chapter 7, verse 8, where it says, Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I am. The word that so often is translated as unmarried, the Greek word there, it can be translated as widowers. And so, because Paul talks about the unmarried in our, in our reading for today, so it's very possible, it's, it really says, now to the widowers and, and widows, I say, it is good for you to stay unmarried as I am, making reference to the fact that Paul at one time had a wife and was a widower. There's also the thought that Paul may have been married And then after he became a Christian, his wife left him because he became a Christian. And that would help understand the the passage I talked about two weeks ago where he said if you're married to an unbeliever and your unbelieving spouse leaves you, it's okay to let them go. And maybe he's saying that because he himself had experienced that. And then one other thought there is, is the possibility that Paul was betrothed to be married, because marriages were arranged back then, even when they were children, that he was betrothed to be married, and then after his conversion experience, and he went away and was by himself and and with the Lord and and learning and growing in his relationship um, with Christ, and then he came back and went to his hometown of, of Tarsus, that it's possible that the woman he was betrothed to, when he came back to town, she said, no, not now that you're a Christian. So it's possible that Paul was either betrothed, maybe married, maybe even a widower. Why do I bring all this up? (laughs) Because it helps us in kind of understanding what's happening in this whole chapter. The people of Corinth had written a letter to Paul with questions. Questions about marriage and questions about singleness. Questions that they were struggling with because they lived in a culture that was very sexually immoral. They lived in a culture where it was typical that a man had three women in his life his wife, his concubine, and his prostitute. And now they're coming to terms with this is not right and how are we to live as, as, a, as a Christian 
in this society and how are we to live in a way that gives honor and glory to God? And so they're asking questions about, do we get married? Do we stay single? What do we do? And they would have known Paul's circumstances. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things about the, the people that are spoken about in the Bible that, that we, don't, we don't have information about, we don't know. But the people in that day and in that time, they knew them. And they knew all the things about them. So here they are coming to the Apostle Paul who may very well have experienced marriage in his life or had experienced um, uh, uh, you know, being a widow, uh, a widower, and, and now is experiencing singleness. And so they're coming to him for his experience, his wisdom, his knowledge in the Word of God. What do we do? How do we handle these things? So in the, in the text for today, as he comes and he starts talking about people who are single, in verse 25 he says, I have no command from the Lord. Okay, previously, when he was talking about marriage, he said, this is not for me, this is from the Lord. This is how the Lord designed marriage. This is what it's about. But when it comes to, to, to being single or married and, and, and what to do, he says, I have no command from the Lord, but I give a judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Okay, I, I, I'm going I'm to give you a good pastoral advice is what the Apostle Paul is saying. Based on my wisdom, my experience, the Word of God. And so verse 26, he says, because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for you to remain as you are. Are you married? Do not seek a divorce. Are you unmarried? Do not look for a wife. Okay? Because of the present crisis, What's the crisis? The crisis was there was a grain shortage, a huge staple in the diet of the people. There was this grain shortage, and because of that, there was a famine. And people were struggling to find enough food and have enough food to eat. And so the Apostle Paul is saying, if you're single... It'd be wise to stay single because in this crisis, all you got to do is take care of and worry about yourself and feed yourself. If you're married, now you've got to worry about a spouse and children and how they're going to eat. So he's talking about in the context of their time, what's going on. There's this crisis, and so he's saying, giving their, his advice that it might be better for them in that circumstance, in that situation, which helps us understand the last part of verse 28 that says, but those who marry will face many troubles in this life, and I want to spare you this. Okay? You take that verse all on its own, and sometimes people do that. See, the Apostle Paul is saying, but those who marry will face many troubles in life. See, told you marriage is nothing but trouble, okay? And I want to spare you of this. That's not what Paul's saying. Paul is saying because of the present crisis, because of the circumstances that are around you, I'm recommending that to avoid trouble and difficulty, worry, concern, how am I going to feed my family? How am I going to take care of them? Maybe it's better in this crisis to remain single. Okay? That's what he's saying. Immediately following that, in verse 29, he says, The time is short. The time is short. Christ is coming again. He's coming in all of his glory. And we don't know when that is going to be, and we are always to be ready. Just as we heard in the gospel lesson today, Jesus began his ministry and he said, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe. And that's what our, our daily life is to be about. Repentance and believing and always being ready for that day when Christ comes again. And so the importance of Paul saying the time is short, we've got work to do, the, 
in our own lives and in the lives of others as being proclaimers of the truth of Jesus Christ, proclaiming the gospel message so that all may hear and know Christ as Lord and Savior. So now he comes and talks about the point that if you're single, it's a whole lot easier to be devoted to the Lord because you're, you're, you're not divided with all these other responsibilities that you have with a spouse and with children. But if you're single, you can be more devoted to the Lord. Again, Paul clearly understands this because he's going around and, and starting churches and preaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of the cross and the empty tomb. And what's happening to Paul? He's being kicked out of towns. He's being kicked, beaten, stoned, thrown into prison. And he's saying, as a single person doing this, this is a whole lot easier than going through this persecution with a family. Okay? Because there were times when they were threatened, deny Christ, or we're going to kill your family. And he's just saying it's easier. So again, the circumstances, the time, and, and the place. Now it's important to note that the Apostle Paul says it's easier as a single person to be committed in doing the work of the Lord. He doesn't say it's required. Okay? He doesn't say it's required. What he says is Whatever your station in life, whether you're single or whether you're married, it's a gift from the Lord. Verse 7 of chapter 7, he says, But each man has his own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. And he was talking about whether being married or single. He says each one has their own gift. To be single is a blessing from God. To be married is a blessing from God. God blesses both in whatever our station in life is. And a person can choose to, to remain single or a person can choose to, to get married. And the Apostle Paul says, there's no right or wrong. No right or wrong. But to remember that both are blessed by God. Then he gets to the main point. Verse 35. Essentially what he's saying is no matter what your station in life, no matter whether you're single, no matter whether you're married, your devotion to the Lord is to be undivided. Devotion to the Lord is to be undivided. A commitment. A total commitment to the Lord and giving over to the Lord. As I mentioned during the confession and absolution, as we heard in the Old Testament lesson, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, your being, with all your strength, with every ounce of us to love the Lord and to not be divided. And there are so many things in life, whether we're single or whether we're married, that are pulling at us and seeking to pull us this way and that way. And we live in a culture that very much compartmentalizes everything in life. Okay, now here's my work life, and here's my play life, and, and here's my school life, and, and oh, and here's my God life over here. But sometimes we get caught up in this compartmentalizing everything, and, and the Lord says to us, no, I'm to be a part of all of your life. He calls us to be all in in, relation, in our relationship with Him. He calls us to give all of ourselves to Him in the response that He's given all of Himself to us. Everything we have, everything we are is a gift from God. Everything. Everything. Every last bit of it, it's all a gift from God. And the greatest gift of all is His Son, Jesus Christ, giving His life on the cross for us. 
And so when we come to the Lord and we confess our sins to Him, He doesn't say, I'll, I'll give you some forgiveness now. He gives us complete forgiveness. He doesn't give us a little grace. He gives us complete grace, complete mercy, complete righteousness, complete love, every bit of it. He pours it out on us. And then he calls us as we are disciples of Jesus Christ and as we seek to follow the Lord, he calls us to undivided devotion. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. No matter what your station in life, no matter what your circumstance, no matter what you, whether you're married or unmarried or, or where you work or what you do or what your career, what, no matter what, God is to be only in our lives. Not first. Not this ranking order. Only. Because only means in my, in my, uh, my relationship with people, God is only. And I live out my relationship with others, with God only in my life. In my work life, God is only. And I, and I do my work and I live out my work with God only in my life. When I'm out playing and in, enjoying God's good earth, God is only. It's, it, and, and it's to carry over into every aspect of our life. And do we fall short of that? Yes, we do. All the time. And that's why we come and we confess to the Lord and He gives us all of His forgiveness. But we seek to grow. Lord, help me. We pray, help me, Lord, to grow in Your grace. We never stop learning. We never stop the need for growth. We're never a perfect disciple. We're never a perfect follower of Christ. We are always seeking to strive and growing in that. And so that's why We've been putting an emphasis on the marks of discipleship, the importance of being in the Word, reading God's Word, the importance of being in prayer and growing in our prayer life, the importance of growing in our worship life, the importance of growing in our generosity, in growing in our Christian friendships, in growing in our witness of the Lord. The importance of that because it draws us closer. It helps us live more of the undivided love of devotion to the Lord as He blesses us and strengthens us and helps us to continue to grow. We have another opportunity coming up for growth. September 30th, we are beginning a sermon series on the I Am statements of Jesus. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. Um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the good shepherd. We're going to be looking at those over, over seven weeks in, in our sermon series. But not only that on Sunday morning, but also there's going to be an opportunity for small groups, growth groups, to take place um, during the week. And there's going to be a number of those um, going on. And the purpose of these growth groups is to gather together with brothers and sisters in Christ, spend time in the Word, focusing in on that particular I Am statement for the week, gather together in, in the Word, praying for one another, listening to one another, what's going on in one another's lives, growing with one another in Christian friendship, supporting and encouraging one another as we seek to grow as individuals, as we seek to grow as a Christian community here at, at St. John's. So next Sunday, there'll be more information about growth groups, their availability, what day, what time they're going to be on so that you can sign up and be a part of, of a growth group, an opportunity to grow in the Lord. Because no matter what our station is in life, married, single, retired, working, in school, no matter what our station is in life, the Lord calls us as He has blessed us with His giving His all to us. He calls us to an undivided devotion to Him, to seek to grow in that each and every day of our lives. 
out of thanksgiving and praise for all that He has given to us and the blessings that come from it as we are connected stronger with the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.